Captain Woodworks. I thought today I would share uh, a comparison between the Shaper Origin and the Glowforge Premium that I have. Both are similar tools, but slightly different in what they can and cannot do. And I thought I'd bring that to you with some examples. So before I get into it, if you'd be kind enough to subscribe to my channel, um, much, much appreciated here in 2021. So the uh, excuse me, the Shaper Origin is what I would classify as a handheld CNC machine. I think a lot of people are becoming more and more familiar with CNC machines, and uh, they have a role in the workshop. I think the purists would probably argue that the, both these machines may not have a place in a traditional work, wood shop, but things are changing, just like everything in life. Technology is disturbing and uh, woodworking is definitely being affected by that. So Shaper Origin, it uses a camera on the back side here and follows uh, domino tape that you put down on the workspace in front of that. And when you do that, the machine knows exactly where it's at in relation to this plane. It's cloud-based, right? So it will it'll download uh, the designs right onto the machine and then as a user, you have to be close to it. You're following a path and this, the spindle with the mechanism is doing all the micro adjustments. Pretty impressive machine, has a ton of applicability in the workshop uh, and I'm always amazed by it. Similarly, the Glowforge is also cloud-based. So um, you design in their application or in, in an Illustrator, etc., upload it and uh, push a button and watch it work. And I think that's probably the main difference between a traditional CNC machine uh, where you just watch it uh, in the Glow for, or excuse me, the Shaper Origin. Here you have involvement and you feel like you're building part of it. There's a little bit of, hey, I'm watching the machine do the work on both the Glowforge and a traditional CNC machine. So those could argue, is that really woodworking? But let me give you an example. So here is a Japanese lattice lantern that I'm trying to, uh, that I'm making. And I cut this on the Shaper Origin. It is a lot of cuts. I used a 332nd bit. I probably could have found some more efficient manner, but the 332nd I really like because it got down into those little nooks and crannies. It took three passes per, um, per cut. Uh, 332nd at an eighth of an inch offset, 332nd uh, at a quarter inch to get all the way through this, and then 332nd at a quarter with zero offset to clean it up. And I think it did a pretty good job, but I tell you what, it this took a long time. Okay, this probably took me three hours. I didn't really, I didn't really watch. You know, I didn't time it. And you can see because you're a human, you're making the moves, and sometimes you move just too fast. And you can see here some mistakes, right? So this isn't perfect. It certainly works, and it's probably operator error. I should have slowed down, but to cut four of these, that's 12 hours. So I thought, huh, I wonder if I could export the content from the Shaper Origin and upload it into, uh, into my Glowforge, and sure enough, I could, because it's just an SVG file. So I put it in the Glowforge, and I pushed print, and this was produced in 12 minutes. And it's absolutely perfect, right? Because it's a machine. Machines don't typically make, well, they don't make errors unless we program to make errors, right? Um, so that would be my comparison between the two machines. Now, beyond that, you know, the Glowforge works on a horizontal. That's all it's going to do. It's got limitations about how thick the, the material can be. Um, you're running a, a laser, so you have to pay attention to that in your shop, etc. cetera. Um, this will actually work uh, vertical as well, which I'm beginning to do, and um, I'm excited to see what it can do on joinery, and that's the next part. So if I was to compare and say, which one should I get? They're really different. 
I, I would personally probably start with this one, the Shaper Origin. You still feel like you're building something. Uh, you feel like you're part of uh, the process. It's great for cutting boards. It's great for any material that, you know, uses a traditional router bit, uh, whereas this is limited to about a, uh, a quarter of an inch uh, piece. It's not going to cut out a cutting board, obviously. Um, so they each have their role, but I really love the Shaper Origin, and I find the, uh, the Glowforge is more for fabrication. That's probably the word I'd use is fabrication. Uh, people love it. I gave away a lot of things that I made on the Glowforge for Christmas, and people are amazed by it, and they compliment me. Wow, that's great. And I appreciate that, of course. But honestly, I just went to Etsy, found a design, pushed a button, and spray painted it. It's fun. But the real pride is when you got a challenge, and I think this serves that better. Now, rest assured, I am going to use these pieces, and I'm going to cut three more instead of spending 12 hours cutting that. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you would be, again, kind enough to subscribe to this. I'm trying to grow my user base in 2021. Um, I, don't take any, uh, I don't take any sponsors. This is about real world uh, experiences and hopefully it's motivating you to get out in the shop. Have a great day.